so uh, we saw some performance indicators in terms of financial performance of firms. Now uh, we saw a number of ratios and I think that is the simplest kind of an analysis to assess the performance of firms. So can we have some illustrations in terms of certain cases where we can employ these financial ratios and draw some inferences from the firms? I think we should do that. So yeah. th there are four, I picked four companies Suresh. Okay. So the first is, so they are from four sectors. Okay. So the first is ultra tech cement, which okay. is cement industry. Okay. So the idea here is to see capital, how are they, you know, what you mentioned, right, in your yeah. thing. Yeah. That uh, people as they, as the uh, demand increases, they keep adding more capacity. Yeah. So to see whether that is happening. Okay. Right. And um, the other is, uh, so and ultra tech cement also is the largest cement, ma cement maker right. amongst in the cement companies. Yeah. So it's kind of representative. What yeah. they do is representative. Yeah. So that is one. The second company is uh, so from the textile industry, page industries. Okay. Uh, it's not the largest company. There yeah. are many, I think maybe yeah. seven or eight. But it has got some company. popular brands. Very popular so. brands. Yeah. Especially in the COVID time, it yeah. is becoming sportswear, all yeah. the thinner wear. Yeah. Everybody is buying. Yeah. So, and uh, it's growing very fast. Okay. And I guess one can see between cement and uh, textiles, yeah. the how it, different ratios come up. Capital right? intensive, capital intensive and then the labor, labor intensive kind intensive. of a industry thing. The yeah. third one is uh, FMCG. Okay. That will be interesting. Because also we talked a lot about yeah. consumption and yeah. all that. So, yeah. here we have picked Nestle. It's okay. a foreign company. Yeah. So, that is the first two are Indian companies. Okay. This one is foreign. Okay. Of course, the page industry sells jockey brand, which is foreign. But yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, yeah. it, manufacturing is in India. Yeah. Nestle also produces everything from India, but it's a foreign company. Yeah. And worldwide, it is number one uh, yeah. in many categories. Yeah. In India also, it is number one in many categories. Yeah. So, it's another interesting company we can look at. For example, you know, FMCG traditionally has very high return on capital employed. So, we can yeah. hope to see something like yeah. that. And the fourth company is from IT. Because India is IT, capital is yeah. So, pick TCS yeah. as the, which is the number one IT company in India, okay. TCS. Okay. So, these four companies, I think, should give us a flavor of different types of things. Right. Different ratios will probably yeah. be valid for these yeah. companies. And, yeah. and also, I tried to bring in some operational parameters which tell you how the cost is managed in these companies or okay. what is the trend okay. or something like that. So, okay. it gives some more color to okay. the discussion. Right? Okay. So, we have a lot of uh, comparisons and contrasts that we can make, make between these across companies these across these companies, companies also. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So, let's take Ultra Tech Cement, which okay. is the first, uh, yeah. first of our… Yeah. So, I just charted here the quarterly performance of Ultratech. Okay. So, things to observe basically here are uh, that you can see basically that the pandemic, uh, we did have a decline, right? I mean, yeah. that is clear. Yes. From 114,000 crores, it declined in the second quarter to 96,000 96, crores. crores. But again, quickly recovered to 1,3,000 crores. Right. And uh, 1,7,000 and then the first quarter of 2021, there's another. Oh, sorry. Huge. No, this is not. This is the pandemic. Yeah. This is yeah. the pandemic. Sorry. Yeah. This is the pandemic impact. Yeah. FI21 is 2021. Yeah. So from 1 lakh 7,000 crores, yeah. it has dipped to 76,000 76, crores. Yeah. I guess some level of decline was there yeah. even before, yeah. primarily because of economic uh, issues, yeah. right? Yeah. But this is the pandemic drop. Yeah. From 1 lakh 7,000, it dropped to 76,000 crores. Yeah. That's a minus 32% decline. Huge decline. 32% yeah. decline. Yeah. But then it recovered. Yeah. The interesting thing is it immediately recovered, yeah. primarily because the government was spending on roads. Right. They indicated that they are going to spend yeah. so, housing. Yeah. So, that's the V-shaped recovery. That is a V-shaped recovery. Yeah. And then from there it went, look at this, from 2Q, 1,22,000 is the current quarter in which the performance is being, yeah. uh, this thing. Yeah. 1,22,000 crores, yeah. which is even higher than 1,7,000 crores yeah. prior to pandemic or even 1,14,000 yes. crores yeah. highest. Yeah. So, big jump. Yeah. Okay. Because of the government stimulus, yes, right, in some yes, sense. Yes. And expected to continue to grow. See, fourth yeah. quarter estimate is 1,33,000. Okay. So, so, so one, one interesting thing that uh, we can notice from this GV is the uh, microeconomic impact of some macro policy reforms. Uh, no? uh. Because here we see the, you know, in reality, we find that the sales has really increased. Increased, from increased, increased, increased primarily because yeah. of government, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other things to note basically is that uh, if you look at the, we will see the margins yeah. uh, uh, as we go down. Yeah. But uh, you can see basically that uh, even though uh, a, a revenue declined from 1 lakh 7,000 to 76,000 crores, yeah. uh, they were still profitable. Yes. This huge 32% drop in revenues yeah. did not lead to 
disappearance of their profit completely. Yeah. Because their profit margin is, you know, very low actually, yeah. about 10 odd percent. Yeah. So, 32 percent drop in revenue if their variable yeah. costs are not managed. Yeah. So, but they seem to have managed their variable cost also no. very well. That's yeah. what it means. Yeah. Right? What you had pointed out yes. in your thing. Yes. That when revenue changes, you should be able to change your variable cost. Yes. So, they have been able to, of course, not fully possible to do because fixed costs are always there. Yeah. You can't change it. Yeah. But to some extent, they have mitigated the revenue decline yes. by managing the variable costs well yes. and still managed to eke out a uh, profit. Profit. Uh, without making loss, they have been able to manage it. Okay. Business. That is the other thing to notice. Okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Some lines that you can see here, and we will see it in the ratios and so on, yeah. is that they have a very high depreciation component, which yes. shows basically that capital yeah. is there and an interest component is also pretty high. Okay. But yeah. they have been able to use their cash because they are making profits. Yeah. They have been able to use their cash to bring, you can see that the interest cost from 5,000 crores it has come down to yeah. 3,000 3, crores. Yeah. Yeah. So, they have been able to bring their interest cost. So, clearly, yeah. they have used their capital very well to yeah. <coughs> reduce or yeah. reduce their loans. Yeah. They have you know, paid back their loans or whatever yeah. and uh, tried to bring their interest cost down. That is very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so here, so here we find that uh, two inferences, one, uh, the general economic environment, how it is impacting the firm performance, yeah. two, uh, how uh, the utilization of capital is leading to reduction in outflow of capital, especially in hedge like interest payments and mm, things like that. Correct, so, correct, yeah. correct. So, the management of what we call as the working capital and the mm. management of variable cost then becomes an important ingredient in terms of getting the margins back mm, on. Mm, yeah, mm, mm. very interesting. So, this is just uh, looking at the uh, cost lines okay. in ultra tech cement. Okay. So, they themselves seem to report the cost in these heads. Yeah. So, re realization is revenue. Yes. Uh, raw material cost, yeah. power and fuel cost, okay. staff cost, yeah. freight and forwarding and other, other expenditure. Yeah. And you can see basically that uh, they have been able to from uh, 3Q FY21 to 3Q FY20 which means just after pandemic year mm. and then you are looking at the pre prior to pandemic yeah. period. Realization has gone up 4%. Mm. Uh, raw material cost has come down. Mm. right? Uh, uh, and uh, power and fuel cost has marginally gone up. Mm -hmm. Staff cost has come down. Mm -hmm. I guess they managed with less staff. Mm -hmm. But uh, increased revenue still. Mm -hmm. uh. Freight and forwarding went up. Mm -hmm. uh, understandable because yeah. during pandemic, I guess. Yeah. And other expenditure seems to have gone down because there is nothing. Probably many other expense line items would have disappeared. Been, yeah. And so that's how they have been able yeah. to uh, get a 29% improvement in the operating margin, EBITDA okay. margin. Okay. So, oh, that's, uh, that's a very stupendous, very, right? yeah, considering the general economic environment, huh. they have been able to manage, manage the cost that extremely well. Yeah. Manage the cost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these are just some valuation metrics. Yeah. So, you can see basically, I mean, the key things to note here are, I mean, they have a very uh, high price earning ratio, primarily because their profit is depressed yeah. in some and, sense. And so, the expectation of profit increase is very high. Okay. So, that is why they have a very high ratio of market price to earnings. Price earnings. And these were the ratios that we were discussing the other day. Price Correct. earnings ratio. Price earnings is the EPS. market. EPS. Uh, EPS, ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And return on capital employed. So, here the, you can see basically that the return on capital employed yeah. for Ultratech is hovering in the 9-10% range. Okay. So, that is, uh, you know, low yeah. because for an equity investor especially, hmm. for a debt investor 10% might be okay. Hmm. But capital employed is a combination of equity and debt. Debt, yeah. So, the, for the equity investor, 10 percent is clearly not good enough. Okay. We need at least 15 or 20 percent in okay. the uh, opportunity cost, which means the, co the uh, you can invest it elsewhere. You have yeah. other sectors yeah. where you can invest, yeah. like IT or something and Nestle yeah. will see. Yeah. You can invest it in sectors like that, which will give you much higher ROC. Okay. So, that way this is not a very attractive and this is the leader, yeah. the market leader yeah. Yeah. and producing 10 percent ROC. Yeah. So, low ROC. Okay. So, uh, this chart basically shows the leading parameters, kind of underlying parameters which influence cement industry. Okay. One is price, the other is uh, so price price per bag. Okay. And when we look at the industry picture, there is a much more color in that. Uh. But this is the price per bag for Ultratech. Okay. So you can see there is some kind of secular increase. Increase in prices. Which yeah. is about three three to four percent type of secular increases there yeah. over the years. Yeah. Uh, for Ultratech. Yeah. So they're so, able to manage to pass on, you know, in some sense their cost increases, if any, Yeah. right? Fuel cost, for example, yeah. has been going up, secular yeah. increases there. Yeah. 
So, being able to pass that on to customers in terms of a price per bag increase. Okay. So, the way to interpret this is, uh, GB, that uh, per bag of cement was costing around 318 yeah, or yeah, 19. Yeah, correct. And it increased up to 360, 364. It went to peak, and yeah. And then, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's correct. I see. So, this in, uh, in a sense, this would actually determine the earnings of the company. This would determine the earnings yeah. of the company. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because price, price per bag, you discuss pricing. Yes. Variable. So, yes. here there are clearly... The industry is, we will probably look at it when we look at the industry, industry picture, yeah. but clearly there is uh, an ability for companies in the industry to yeah. have some kind price of control, a, yeah. control price over the price. Over the price. Yeah. The other is volume. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, we will see that cement industry basically is going to be volume led, not so much price led. Okay. Uh, there is not that much possibility to do much in price, but volume is going to be one of the key things. Okay. In influence because demand is increasing at phenomenal pace. Okay. So, but Clearly, you know, the volume ha has not been growing steadily in this period, primarily yeah. because of pandemic. Yeah. But if you look over a much longer period, if you take a five-year picture, mm. volume has been steadily increasing, uh, has shown a steadily increasing rate. So, you can see these two last quarters kind of indicated mm. mm. about 10 percent increase mm. in volume mm. uh, year on year because mm. this one quarter, this is a comparison of one quarter with the corresponding quarter of the previous year, mm. right? So, for example, in this Q1 FY21, which is the pandemic. Yeah. We saw a negative 30 percent volume decline. Okay. Compared to? Compared to Q1 of FY20. 20. Okay. Right. Yeah. There was not that much of a price decline, you yeah. can see. Yeah. But volume decline was there. Okay. So, it's influenced quite a lot by Okay. And correspondingly, you can see this mirror of this, the shape of this. Yeah. You can see the shape. It's more or less the same. Oh, yes. In a beta. Yes. So, price is kind of more or less stable. Yeah. It's somewhat secular growth, but stable. Yeah. So, volume is what is dictating yeah. the EBITDA. So, EBITDA is to, to reiterate again, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. Right. Yeah. It's kind of an operating okay. margin, you yeah. can say, for the company. Yeah. So, uh, that I think we have seen this, we have seen the profit and loss. Profit and loss. Balance okay. Sheet. So, the balance sheet, but this is only the difference is that this is five years. Okay. okay. But anyway, I mean, even five years, you can see basically the margin. Yeah. Packed margin has been hovering in the. Yeah. Nine, 10, 6, 6, 7, 6, 9, 10. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, and even projected in the future, yeah. you're saying 12, 13, 14, maybe maximum. Yeah. This is all optimistic, I think. Very optimistic. Scenario. Yeah. 10 yeah. percent is a kind of a good margin for yeah. cement companies. Yeah. They seem to operate in that margin number. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, this. Uh, Interest and financial charges have been a component which has been, you know, uh, increasing over time and they have been trying to control that also, no? Yeah. From 5 to, it has moved to… Correct. You are right. Yeah. It's been steadily, dec steadily decreasing yeah. over a period of time. Yeah. The other parameter variable that you might look at is the tax rate. Okay. So, if you see the tax rate has been around 27, 29, 30, 32, 30. In fact, actually… Cement industry, they get uh, because of huge capital investments they right, make. Right. They get some uh, ben uh, tax benefits. Okay. Okay. But in spite of that, and so the other industries have been much higher than thirty. Yeah. So this industry is hovering around thirty. Okay. But you see, the FY twenty is twenty one. Okay. Uh, percent. So yeah. lower tax rate. Yeah. Primarily because they were able to get additional benefits okay. in FY twenty, and yeah. also we will see in some other companies when we look at some of the other companies that. The general overall tax rate has been declining primarily because the government yeah. reduced the corporate tax, tax rate rates in the FY19, the right. 2019 period. Yeah. So, the people have taken advantage. Now, there is a 22 percent ceiling on corporate tax yeah. rate. So, they are taking advantage of that. Okay. Yeah. And this is the balance this sheet. This is the balance sheet. Yeah. So, if you look at the key balance sheet uh, observations, ah. uh, you see basically that uh, they have both, uh, you know, uh, equity. Mm. So, if you take FY20, yeah. 3,88,000 plus 2,000 years. So, 3,91,000 crores is uh, the equity yeah. portion. Yeah. And then they have total loans of 2,28,000 crores. Yeah. So, they have taken fair amount of debt also. Mm. So, these companies usually are financed by both equity and debt. Yeah. They have leverage, right? Yeah. So, this looks leverage. like something like 60, 60, 40 kind in of this 60 case, in the, yeah. and 40, 40 debt, debt kind of a debt thing. Kind of yeah. thing. And correspondingly, therefore, also you will see interest costs. Yeah. But uh, if you go back uh, FI16, for example, uh, also they had uh, 
okay, they have increased their debt. They, yeah. they obviously they have borrowed more. Yes. Period. Yes. And now they are. We saw basically that they are trying to reduce it. Yeah. So if you see projected, for example, from two lakh twenty eight thousand, mm. they are looking to bring the debt down to one lakh sixty eight thousand. Yeah. Then one lakh eight thousand. Oh yes. Like. Yeah. So they are going to bring it back to what it was in FI sixty. Yes. So if you look at the FI twenty three projection, mm. one lakh crore debt versus five lakh seventy seven thousand crore equity. So oh, okay. Yeah. Considerable reduction yeah. in debt. In debt. And increase in equity yeah. from three lakh ninety one to so. So that is what we we term it as you know capital restructuring. Restructuring. Okay. Yeah. Long term yeah. restructuring. Long term restructuring. Okay. And therefore, what that means also is that you are going to have interest cost will come down. Come down. And if the expectation is that the interest costs are going to increase, it's an increasing mm. trend. Yeah. So interest costs coming down is very good news. Okay. Right. Uh, they have some money locked up in inventory, so forty one thousand crores locked up in inventory. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and all that. Okay. Yeah. So those are some basic observations of balance sheet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see the ratios. Sure. Right? Sure. Yeah. So again, cash flows statement basically tells you how they're where they're getting cash from. Cash from. Yeah. So you can see basically that uh, from cash flow from cash from operating. So they are generating. Fifty thousand crores so here. See, for example, FY20 is generated eighty-nine thousand crores, fifty-nine thousand. So fifty to ninety thousand crores is being generated from their cash. From okay. their cash is being generated from their operating business operations. Huge cash-producing mm. machine, mm. right? Mm. Uh, but uh, you know, forty-two thousand crores out of this ninety-four is going back, being plowed back. Okay. To reduce loans in yeah. this case, I think yeah. mostly. Yeah. Uh, so here in this case, it, even the investment activities produce some income, okay. other income and all that. Right? Okay. So like that. Yeah. And totally overall, uh, the cash balance has been managed at okay. around forty thousand crores. Okay. So very prudent cash management yeah. is what one sees. Yeah. Here. And this will be useful for the firm to meet its uh, variable cost. Variable cost. The next know, time period. Yeah. To, correct. To working to, capital. Yeah, yeah. They don't need to borrow yeah. from working capital. Yeah. They can use their. You know. Yeah. Cash from operating business yeah. to take care of even some small investments. They investments can make. also yeah. definitely they can take yeah. care or some expansions. Yeah. So here I have put the ratios, some yeah. of the ratios. Yeah. But I also did the calculation from the balance sheet. You can do the calculation. Okay. So one lakh forty four thousand three hundred seven crores is the current assets. Okay. And the current liabilities is one lakh nineteen thousand one fifty two. Yeah. This is what the balance sheet. Yeah. So if you take the ratio, divide one by the other, you get one point two one. Yeah. So this tells you in some sense solvency ratio, it is right? Yeah. Tells you whether or not yeah. there is enough money in the bank. Yeah. Some investments which you can quickly cash. Yeah. Plus also receivables from customers. Yes. yes. And some other things. Yes. So all that, if you put together, yes. is that enough to pay off your debtors? Yes. Whatever you owe to people. Right. Right. Current ratio. Current ratio. Okay. So if you look at that, so, so that tells so you. So above above one is a good indicator, good indicator, and this is clearly above. So one. they are clearly solvent, okay. and they are managing their. Okay. Think pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. So uh, so the other thing that we we were talking the other day was this uh, uh, days inventory days and debtor days and things ah, like that. Ah, right. No. So how many? So debtor days basically means that they have they are able to collect. Yeah. Whatever they invoice yeah. to customers, yeah. they're able to collect it within twenty eight, twenty five, twenty six so days. That's a very interesting thing. From twenty eight, they've been able to bring, bring it, down it down to nineteen days. In fact, you will see it in all companies. Okay. This COVID time, everybody has been able to collect money. Okay. IT especially has been able to collect money. Very that's well. a very interesting yeah. kind of yeah. an observation. Yeah. 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 So I that's see. so it generates. So that means that is why the operating cash has been much higher. Okay. You're generating a lot of operating cash because okay. the minute you bring down debtor days, yeah. your cash suddenly starts right increasing quite right. a lot. Operating cash. Yeah. So we have a, a basic set of ratios that is uh, EPS and those kind of things. Yeah. Second set of ratios is on valuation. That is the price earnings ratio and things yeah. of that sort. Yeah. EBITDA and EV by, EV EBITDA. by EBITDA and all. Yeah. Third is the return ratio. That is uh, return on capital employed and those type of ratios. Fourth is the working capital ratios and fifth is the leverage ratio. Yeah. Now yeah. this gives the entire complete picture of firms' financial health. Yeah. Fantastic.